So this is geometry lesson 1.2. Uh, we are looking at ordered pairs as points. Big idea, the ordered pairs of real numbers and the lines that you graphed in algebra are points and lines in Euclidean plane coordinate geometry. So we're looking at points, we're looking at a set of points, which is a line, and how do they, or how are they represented on the coordinate plane? This is plane geometry. All right, so let's kind of put some definitions to that so we understand what's going on here. So a point can be represented by an ordered pair. And if you forgot what that means, those are the numbers that we put as a coordinate, x, comma, y. So that's how we represent a point. This is called an ordered pair or a coordinate. Now a line, we have one point. If we have a set of points or a set of ordered pairs, so a bunch of ordered pairs, a set, that's going to form a line. And then what is a plane? So this is the coordinate plane. First of all, it's two-dimensional, where a line, we talk about it right down here, is one-dimensional. A point doesn't have any dimensions. It's just marking a spot. But a line is one-dimensional. It goes left to right, or it goes up and down. Okay, but it doesn't do both. Where a plane has a width and it has a height. Now, it doesn't have a depth, so it's only two-dimensional, not three-dimensional. But we're going to define this as a flat surface. And it does extend indefinitely, meaning it goes forever. You could say infinitely, I guess. Indefinitely in every single direction. And like we said, this is two-dimensional. All right, so that covers the main vocabulary that we're really going to talk about. And we're going to go back to some basic algebra, some forms of lines. What do the equations look like? So the standard form of a line is when your equation is in this form, ax plus by equals c. The important part to notice there is your x and your y are on the left side. a, b, and c are just whole numbers. These are whole number coefficients, and this is just a whole number by itself. So if you have the something x plus something y equals just a number by itself, that's the standard form. Now, we're probably a little more familiar with slope-intercept form. You've done a million problems with slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And just a reminder what that y-intercept means, that's where it actually crosses the y-axis. It intercepts the y-axis. And the slope, we'll talk about here, is a measurement of the rise over run, how fast this line is going up or down. Okay, so your slope represented by m. Again, rise over run. Back to algebra. How do we calculate it? If we have two points, we subtract the y values on top, y2 minus y1, and you subtract your x values on the bottom. If you mix those up, think rise over run. The y value measures the rise, how fast is it going up or down, and then the run is your x value left to right. All right, so if we need to calculate slope, that's what we're gonna look at. We're also gonna look at some special lines, horizontal and vertical lines. Those are represented by equations that say y equals some number or x equals some number. For instance, y equals 5. If that's the whole equation, all right, that's a horizontal line. And if it just said x equals negative 5, that's going to be a vertical line. So x equals is vertical, y equals is horizontal. And that's not something you need to memorize. You just need to kind of think about it. I never have that memorized. I just think about what that looks like on a graph. So y equals 5. If I went to y equals 5, everywhere on this line, the y values are 5. So that's a line that goes like this. So even if I come over to this part of the graph, 
if I'm on that line, the Y value is five. The X value changes as I go from left to right, but that line that's horizontal is always at Y equals five. And the same is true for the X. X equals negative five, no matter where I go on that line, it never gets to X equals negative four. It never gets to X equals negative six. It's always X equals negative five. All right, and then this word, you may or may not have seen before, oblique. That just is the description of a line that's not horizontal or vertical. So you can kind of think of that as a diagonal line in a way. But basically, it is not horizontal or vertical. So oblique describes most of the lines that we look at. Because horizontal and vertical lines tend to be special lines. And then all the other lines we look at are oblique. All right, let's jump into number one, basic algebra review for most of this section. Graph the line with the equation y equals 3x plus 1. Very basic algebra. So you need to identify your slope and your intercept. That's your slope and that's your intercept because it's in that nice form, y equals. All right, so m equals 3. It's rise over run. Remember, a whole number is like over 1. So it's 3 over 1, and our intercept is 1. So when we go to put that on the graph, you start at the y-intercept. The plus one there in the b position tells us this line hits whether it's going up or down. Now we know it's going up because it has a positive slope, but we know it hits the y-axis at one. So there is a point on this line that hits right there at y equals one, and then you use the slope to find some more points on the line, and then you can sketch it out. So again, this is rise over run. So it means up three because it's positive. If it was a negative three, you'd go down and then over one. And we're always working left to right, thinking about the way you write, the way you read left to right. So we're going from this point up three over one. The next point would be off the graph, but up three over one. Sometimes it helps to put that there so that as you work backwards, Right? There's more points down here that went up 3 over 1 to get here. So as you're working backwards, now you actually go down 3 to the left 1. Sometimes that can confuse students because we just talked about, well, it's always to the right. It's always to the right. Well, we just need to make sure that this is positive and work our way backwards. So this line should be coming down this direction. So it's down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. And now it goes from left to right, starting from the farthest left point up three over one, up three over one, up three over one. All right. Now that was long winded. That can be something that you do very quickly. You identify the intercept, you identify the slope and you sketch that graph. All right, number two, we're just gonna take it one step further. We're going to take this equation, which is in standard form. So remember standard form, <clears throat> AX plus BY equals C. You have a whole number. That's isolated, the x and the y are on the same side of the equation. So here's your x and your y and your whole number that's been isolated. We're gonna first put that into slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And then once we've got it there, it's easy to graph, so that's what we'll do. So we're gonna do some basic algebra here. y equals mx plus b, what's special about it? The y value has been isolated. So we wanna isolate this y value, which means get everything to the other side of the equation, everything eliminated from the left side of the equation. So the easiest way to do it is to save the division for last. And so we're gonna minus the two x from both sides. It's gone now, so all I have is five y on the left. And these two cannot interact. You cannot call that eight x because this is not a 10 x. Okay, something with an x and something that's a whole number. They have to stay separate. We talked about that in algebra. Those are not like terms. Okay, if they don't have the same variable, then you cannot add or subtract them together. So these stay separate. Now, because we want to have this x up front to have that nice y equals mx plus b form, I'm going to list this uh, term first with the x. So negative 2x. And the 10 is still there. It's a positive 10, so I put a plus 10. If it was a negative 10, I would write it as minus 10. Okay, we're almost there. We're still not in y equals mx plus b slope intercept form yet because this coefficient is there. Correct y equals mx plus b slope intercept form. The coefficient to y is a one and we don't actually have to write it. So first thing we need to do here is get rid of 
this 5. Now that 5, because it's a coefficient to y, is being multiplied times y, so we divide to get rid of it because 5 divided by 5 equals a 1y, which is what we want. So there's really a 1 here. We just don't write it. And division, now you can do all the way across. It doesn't have to have an x in it to go ahead and do that. So that's just when you're combining like terms, so adding or subtracting. Division and multiplication we can do to everything. So this gets it and this gets it. The 10 divided by 5 is going to give us a nice whole number 2 over here. That doesn't divide nicely, and that's okay because this represents the slope, remember? And that's rise over run, which we like to express as a fraction anyway. So we're going to leave this as a negative 2 over 5 in front of the x. That represents our slope. We're okay with a fraction. And then over 10 over 5 becomes a positive 2. So we've done this now. We've rearranged this algebraically so that we're in slope-intercept form. So that's my slope. That's my intercept. M is negative 2 fifths. Again, that's the rise over the run. It's negative, so we're going down 2, and then we're still always going left to right over 5. And my intercept is positive 2, so that's where I start. So I'm going up to 2 on the y-axis. That's the y-intercept. And then down 2 over 5, down 2 over 5. Down 2 over 5 would be way out here somewhere. So as I work backwards, I need to make sure that this line's going over here. So I actually go up 2, and then I go left 5. You can double check yourself. Going from left to right, down 2 over 5, down 2 over 5. Quick sketch. All right, as we move on to page 2. You flip it over. Third example, just graphing these basic horizontal and vertical lines. So these are just going to look like this, straight side to side or straight up and down. And they're always going to have this value. Okay, so the equation kind of gives away what it does. So y equals 3. Go to the y-axis and go to 3. And if you're kind of guessing and completely lost, we know these are horizontal or vertical lines, right? So we know it either goes this way or this way. And if you're at three, going straight up and down wouldn't really make sense, right? We would just be following the y-axis. That should seem a little weird to you. That would be x equals zero, technically. All right, so that doesn't make sense. So this is going to be a horizontal line. Let's label it. This is y equals three. And again, the logic behind it, make sure you understand it. You're not just memorizing that it's horizontal. No matter where I go on this line, right here, right here, right here, the y value is still 3. It's at that same height there on the graph. Okay, the x value changes as I go left to right, but y is always 3. That's what the equation is telling me. And then the same idea holds true for this. So x equals negative 2. Go to the x-axis. It's telling you x equals negative 2. All right, and then we're not going to go like this. If we drew a horizontal line, the x value would change over here. It'd be 3, and it'd be 5. It'd be negative 5. The x value is always negative 2. The only way to make that true is to go straight up and down. Let's label it x equals negative 2. All right, so no matter where I go on this line, the y value may change, negative 3, negative 5, but the x value never becomes anything except negative 2, no matter where I go on that line. All right, and number 4. Kind of take everything here, and again, this is pretty much all stuff that you did in algebra, just a quick review, and we're going to start using it now in geometry. We're going to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form. That's important because in algebra, you learned how to do this a couple different ways. That contains these two points. So if we're going to write something in slope-intercept form, it gives us the slope and the intercept, y equals mx plus b. We need a slope and we need an intercept. Just looking at this, I don't have either one right now because the y-intercept, like at this point, if it hit at 5, that ordered pair, the x value is 0 and the y value is 5. So every time we have a y-intercept, the x value is 0 if it's hitting here. The x value can't be 1 or negative 2 
or five, that's not the y-intercept. So the x value is zero and you're hitting the y-axis somewhere. So neither one of these represent b, okay? Because we don't actually have a zero in front. If we had the zero two or zero eight, then we know that is the y-intercept, but these are not the y-intercept. Four two is over here somewhere. That's not hitting the y-axis. One eight is up here somewhere. That's not hitting the y-axis. So we don't have that, and we don't even have the slope yet, but we can find the slope. So let's start with that. Slope, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. That should come back quickly. You probably memorized it at some point. Again, this is rise over run. And as you think of a graph, the rise is your y value. So we're just trying to find out how much did the y value change. That's why we subtract. We went from 2 to 8. How much of a change was that? How much was that a change in the rise? And then the x value went from 4 to 1. How much did this run over? So understanding this formula will help you actually remember it. How much did the y value change? How fast is this going up or down? How much did the x value change? Side to side. All right, it actually doesn't matter which one you call y2 and y1. If you remember that from algebra, you could do 2 minus 8 or you could do 8 minus 2. But whichever direction you decide to go on the top with the y's, you have to go the same direction when you come down to the bottom. So normally you would call this like x1 and y1, and this would be x2 and y2. But it, again, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. I'm going to go this direction. And if it helps you to draw the arrow so that you don't mess it up, go ahead and draw the arrow. So my y values are 8 and 2, because remember this is x comma y. So my y values in both of these are 8 and 2. So I'm doing 8 minus 2 on the top. My x values are 1 and 4. I've got to go the same direction, though. So don't do 4 minus 1. I went from here to here. So I have to go from here to here. 1 minus 4. That's going to create a negative number, and that's OK. So 8 minus 2 is 6. 1 minus 4, just basic mental math there. 4 minus 1 is 3, so 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Right. And if we divide this, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and there's a negative, so the slope is negative 2. So if we were going to write an equation in this form right now, we know that m equals negative 2. So we can drop that in there, negative 2x plus b. Now somebody who's just starting out in algebra might go ahead and like take the 8 or take the 2 and put it in there and say, there it is. There's my slope-intercept form. But... Again, we talked about these are not the intercepts, so that's not going to work. We have to find the intercept. Now, we have x and y, and we have points, ordered pairs, that go together. If these are on the line, then they make this equation true or valid. Both sides will be equal to each other. So you can take either one of these points and plug them in for x and y, and all we'll have left in terms of variables is the b. And we can solve that equation, get b by itself. It'll say b equals, and there you go. Now we have our y-intercept. So I'm going to use the 4 and the 2. But just remember from algebra, you can use the 1 and the 8. You could use any point that's on this line and plug it in for x and y, and it will all come out the same. So the y I'm going to plug in 2. Let me just bring this down here. My x and my y, I'm going to use the 4 and the 2. So x equals 4, y equals 2. So I'm going to plug them into the equation. The 2, the y value, goes in right here. And I still have negative 2. It's being multiplied times x. So I'm plugging in for x. x is 4. I still have b. <clears throat> and so now I'm going to isolate b, and I'll find out what it's equal to. So first thing I should do is multiply. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. I'm going to bring everything down. So again, all I did was multiply negative 2 times 4 to get negative 8. Now, if I want to find out what b is, I need to say b equals. So I need to get rid of this 8. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. That creates a 10. b is now isolated, so b equals 10. So at this point now, I have enough information to write the equation of the line. The slope is negative 2, and b equals 10. I can now write this out. y equals slope is negative 2 and b is positive 10.
Now, real quick, just to prove it to you and just to see it another way in case you were confused with where these twos and fours came from, let's use the one and the eight. You don't need to do this twice, but I wanna show you that it's okay to use either point. So again, starting from y equals negative two x plus b. Okay, we have the slope, but we don't have the intercept. If we took the other point, the other order pair of one and eight and plug that in. So eight goes in for y, because that's the y value. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the x value is going to be one. You would multiply, so that's negative two. Again, trying to isolate B so we know what it equals. Add 2 to both sides to eliminate the negative 2. So B equals 10. And so you can see I used both points and I got the same answer. So it doesn't matter which one you use. You now have B that drops in the correct spot. Slope drops in the correct spot. And you now have the equation of the line in slope-intercept form that came from these two points.